I'm sitting on my floor today because I'm going to be showing you my current bookshelf, my tiny but mighty bookshelf. Stay tuned. Hello there and welcome to this video. I am Tyler Simone and you are watching Reading in Black. If this is your first time ever clicking onto one of my videos, welcome. I'm happy to have you. And if you have subscribed to me already, I'm just so happy that you found me out there in the YouTube world. Today, I'm gonna be talking about my bookcase. And I know it's not much. The top shelf are the newest books in my collection and they feature the books that I'm currently reading at the moment. The middle row and the bottom row are just other books that I love that I have just organized by size and height. I love Oprah and these are two of my favorite books. This one is The Uncommon Wisdom of Oprah Winfrey and then this one is What I Know For Sure. Because I've highlighted the different things that I want to remember, I can go to each chapter depending on my mood and depending on what words I need to hear and reread what I already loved which makes it so much easier you have to have the secret in your collection it's just one of those books I live by the secret I knew that the world is a reflection of your thoughts and that whatever you're thinking matters I knew that because my mom instilled that in me from an early age but I didn't know that there was an actual phenomenon behind that and it is the secret if you've never read the secret you're missing out i believe the documentary is still on netflix i will say that that documentary it's a little corny to me i'd rather just read the book guilty pleasure of mine i love books and articles and interviews about fame and the reason why is because when you listen to famous people talk about fame, whether they wrote about it in a book or they talk about it in an interview, you realize what it actually is. And you start to realize that it's not all it's cracked up to be. You know, if you've never read a book on fame, I suggest you do it. This one's by uh, Justine Bateman, who I didn't really know who she was before I read the book, I'm gonna be honest, but she is an actress. I got a really different perspective on fame and I really appreciated how honest she was about it. So these are the new books that I've gotten. They are The Perfect Fine, which is by Tia Williams. This is one of the books that I'm reading right now. I really am invested in the characters. The story is about this woman. She's 40 years old. Her name is Jenna. And she's been working in the fashion entertainment industry for a while. I'm not going to tell you everything, but her new job is underneath her arch nemesis. The lead character, Jenna, is a black woman. And Darcy, who is the arch nemesis, she's also a black woman. So we have powerful, smart black women in this book, which I love. This is a book that's been recommended by so many people. Hood Feminism is basically a critique of the feminist movement. It talks a lot about how the feminist movement benefits those who are already privileged, and it doesn't necessarily help people of color, specifically black women. Not only has it been recommended to me by a bunch of different people, but I need to know more about the feminist movement as a whole. I feel a little bit uneducated when it comes to the feminist movement. And I think that this is a great start for me as a black woman to read this book and just get different perspectives on it. There are more beautiful things than Beyonce. This is by Morgan Parker and it's a book full of beautiful poetry. The only thing more beautiful than Beyonce is God and God is a black woman sipping rosé and drawing a lavender bath, texting her mom, belly laughing in the therapist office. Obviously on the list of books to read is The Hate You Give which is a classic. It's by Angie Thomas. If you haven't heard of this book then I don't know where you've been. So not only am I reading The Perfect Find by Tia Williams but I'm also reading The Little Black Book of Success Laws of Leadership for Black Women and this book is super helpful for me because it's written by three black women who have held really high up positions in the corporate world 
world. And the reason why a book like this is really necessary, even though it's super specific, is because there are no books really for black women uh, when it comes to trying to become a leader and trying to move up. And it's different for us because we have these obstacles that we have to look out for and move around in order to make it far in life. What you have to say is just as important as what others have to say, so speak up. And the reason why this chapter specifically spoke to me is because I'm more outspoken now, but I could be more outspoken and I was even less outspoken in the past. It comes from being shy, but it also comes from not feeling like your opinions or your views are gonna be heard at all, whether you speak up or not. Sometimes we tend to be intimidated by those in the dominant society because they have had many of the advantages and access to opportunities that we have not had. While the chapter is talking about why it's important to speak up and voice your opinion, the cultural code goes back to why we may feel intimidated or afraid to speak up in the first place. I'm becoming more of a leader every day. The Wedding Party by Jasmine Guillory is also on the list. Queenie, which is a hit, is on the list. Womanish. Now I'm still trying to decide what I'm going to read for the month of June, but this book, Well Read Black Girl, is probably going to be it. I'm still deciding, but I really want to dive into this. It is basically a cultivation of essays by famous black writers. Oh yes, and of course, also on my top shelf is The Motivation Manifesto by Brendan Burchard. This is one of my favorite self-help books in the world. Not only is it beautiful, I love the way it looks, but it contains so much wisdom and power. I am so happy it was recommended to me. I love this book. I'm still working my way through it, but it's only because I have to literally stop and reflect on everything. I highlight everything and I've gotten so into it that I've started circling words that I don't know and writing the definition of them on the book. My thinking has just expanded exponentially and I'm enjoying it. It's so matter of fact and it's so confident. The way it's written is just, it's like, you know what? This is just what it is. He talks about where fear comes from. He talks about doubt. He talks about living fully, being present constantly. He talks about personal freedom. And I know that I'm gonna read this over and over again. If you're looking for a self-help book, this is the one. I have a little bit of everything in here. The Universe is Calling You by Shar Margolis. I haven't really started reading it yet, but it sounds good. This book is by Gail Evans. I really enjoyed this book, Play Like a Man, Win Like a Woman, because isn't that what we're all trying to do? <clears throat> USA Today says, this book is perfect for any woman looking for a step-by-step -step guide to becoming just as ruthless and successful as her boss. I agree with that one. I really enjoyed this book. It made me realize that working is a game. It's all a game and you're a player just trying to make it further in the game. You're trying to be more successful than the other players in the game. You're trying to be at the top and the game never stops. As long as you're working, you're in the game. It is very, very helpful. I am a sucker for a relationship book, a book about love, a book about how to find a partner. I love those types of books. This is one of the first ones I read as a young lady. I thought it was a good idea to read a book written by a man about what men really think about love and relationships. So it's coming from a man's perspective, which is very helpful because I think that a big problem is women just go to other women for advice when not to say that that doesn't help or that it doesn't work or that they're not correct, but you'd probably get more accurate information from an actual man. You know what I mean? Of course I have Becoming by Michelle Obama. I have Charlemagne the God's Shook One and Black Privilege. I finished Black Privilege. I really, really enjoyed it. That pretty much sums it up. I also have books that I don't think I'm ever gonna read because 
I'm just not interested, but who knows? Feed Your Face, which is by Jessica Wu, and then Audience of One, which has Donald Trump on the front of it, initially made me very nauseous, but the title makes me feel like it's something I might want to read. Donald Trump Television and the Fracturing of America. It sounds interesting, but I also don't know if I'm in the mood for that just yet or ever. I don't know. We'll see. So yes, like I said, right now I'm reading The Perfect Fine by Tia Williams, which is a fiction novel. I like to read this at night before I go to bed while I'm winding down because it's entertaining and it's not too heavy. I don't want to read anything too heavy before I go to bed. These two are the books that I switch off on for the morning. So either I'm wanting to be a better leader, wanting to take down some tips, or I just want to evolve as a person and I read Motivation Man manifesto slowly but surely working my way through all three I think you guys will catch on to the fact that I don't just stick to one book at a time maybe I will at a later date but for now I enjoy bouncing back and forth depending on my mood and the time of day that completes my current bookshelf tour. I hope you enjoyed it. The reason why I wanted to start with this video specifically is so that you guys can see what books I already have because I know that over time this collection is just gonna grow. Oh yes, the collection is definitely gonna grow. I already have two new books on the way to me as we speak. But anyway, thank you so much for sticking with me through this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe and leave me a comment before you go and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.